Hello! Now that the NIST Cybersecurity Framework 2.0 is officially out, I wanted to take some time to talk about what to do about it. My name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. Since the CSF's update, I've been working with clients and getting a lot of questions like, what do I do now and where do I start? I put out a few videos recently on the NIST Cybersecurity Framework and what it is and why you would use it, and another video specifically on the 2.0 update, and I'll link those below so be sure to check them out if you want to learn more. But in this video, I'd like to talk specifically about how to handle the changes and where to start if you're already using the framework. There have been a lot of changes in the CSF core, namely the govern function, but there have also been a lot of categories and subcategories that have been realigned, added, and removed and kind of reshuffled around, which makes an interesting challenge for those of us that are already using the framework today. Luckily for us, NIST has released a mapping from 1.1 to 2.0, and this is called an informative reference on their website, and I'll make sure to link that down below, but this will help us as we start to dig in. So how do we get started? <laughs> First, we need to map the change. And like I mentioned before, NIST has done a lot of this work for us already, thankfully. Then we need to identify any gaps that we have in our existing cybersecurity capabilities. And finally, we can build a roadmap and create a plan for addressing these gaps. So let's get started. The first critical step is to use that informative reference mapping to dig into those changes within your company and begin realigning your policies, guidance, documentation, or profiles to version 2.0 to see where you stack up. Taking a closer look at the govern function specifically, here we can see that NIST took what was previously a single category and expanded it into an entire function with six categories. Here, this really emphasized the need to have the, those concepts of policies, oversight, defining roles and responsibilities. So this is one area that you're probably doing something, but you need to see where there may be more that needs to be built out or more, more maturity built out in those processes to align with those new categories. Once you have a good understanding of how your capabilities align to the updated framework, then you'll be able to more clearly see your strengths, but also any weaknesses in your program. The CSF 2.0 updates reflect the changes we've seen in industry over the last six years since the minor update in 2018, and were driven by both the need to address the evolving landscape as well as emerging challenges. I really think this is a great opportunity to take an honest look at your cybersecurity capabilities through the lens of these updates and make sure your program hasn't gone stagnant and, and that you're appropriately managing your cyber risk today. Through this exercise, you'll probably find areas and gaps that should be strengthened based on the evolving cyber landscape. There aren't really a truly a significant number of new concepts in the updated framework, but there are many areas like governance, like I mentioned, and also incident response that have been expanded to be more explicit and highlight important outcomes for a cybersecurity program. One example is the incident recovery plan execution category. This category was expanded pretty significantly and now highlights areas such as prioritizing recovery activities, verifying your backups, and then generally ensuring the integrity of restored assets. Another significant area you might want to take a look at is platform security, which is a new category that largely pulls from the information protection processes and procedures category, as well as the protective technologies category, um, focusing on security protections more broadly around platforms like hardware, software, or even virtual components. So it's pulling from these discrete areas where you there were previously things we were doing, but now it's kind of realigned them. And so we need to take a look at that and see what it means for us. Another new category we should take a look at is the technology infrastructure resilience category that pulls largely from that information protection processes and procedures and protective technologies category. But it also pulls in some areas, some concepts from the data security category like resource capacity. And we really need to take a look here to see how we're managing our organization's security architecture and its protections all the way from the network to the environment. So these are just a few examples of things that have kind of been realigned, but it's going to make it a fun challenge to really dig into what it means for us. So once we've taken a closer look to see if there's any opportunities for growth and expansion through addressing these gaps, we'll need to consider our specific risks. You know, ensuring risk management was another key enhancement, I think, in CSF 2.0. And not just the category itself, they but they built out the language of risk management across the entire framework to make sure that we don't forget about it as we go. I think NIST really was much clearer about the expectation that companies need to determine what's necessary for them based on their business and then need to manage those risks appropriately. NIST is giving us the outcomes and the what we need to do, where how to set our targets, but we have to figure out how to make it happen and what's that process or capability that's gonna make sense for us. 
So once we understand these gaps and evaluate their significance based on the risk they bring, we can start to prioritize what we need to address first and create a plan. And this can be done in many ways. But one way I wanted to highlight here is a new free tool that Optic Cyber Solutions has created to help measure your capabilities and report out both your gaps as well as your progress as you start implementing the change. We tailored our maturity progress tracker to align to the NIST Cybersecurity Framework 2.0 to help simplify this process of figuring out where you stand against the CSF updates and have a simple mechanism for tracking progress over time. I'll link the tool down below in the video notes, so be sure to check it out. At Optic, we really believe that understanding where you stand is critical for managing your cybersecurity program and managing your specific risk. So don't miss out on the free download below. So here, I want to show you a little behind the scenes on what you can expect from the map tool. There's two primary areas you'll want to dig into in the spreadsheet, the profile viewer and the reports. <laughs> the profile viewer provides a great way to capture both your current and your target state, as well as your maturity levels, and then also enables you to indicate how you're, how you're moving through your program through a progress status column. So this is where all the data input is, and it can help you get your arms around what you have and what you need to build out. The second piece is the reports, the part that we're going to share with others and, and use in our communications as we talk across our organization. And the reports are built out across two sheets, one to highlight maturity and one to communicate our progress. Here on the maturity reports sheet, we can see that our current and target maturity levels are side by side in two formats, a radar chart and a bar chart. We didn't want to create new concepts that people didn't understand, but use something familiar, but just create a mechanism that was easier to capture and to make that process a little bit simpler for companies. So here, we think this can be a helpful way to quickly understand where we have gaps and where we need to spend some additional effort. We also provided a way to view this information at both the function and the category level so that you can use the right chart at the right level of detail for your audience. Then we have our progress reports sheet. And here we can see how our projects are coming along. We have radar charts and bar charts on this sheet again, both at the function and category level. But here we can use this to view where we've spent our time and resources. Building resilience and maturity in cybersecurity is not a linear task. It's usually pretty easy to go from a maturity level one to a maturity level two, but getting to a level three takes a lot more effort and focus. The progress report can help us demonstrate that just because we may not be showing an increase in maturity on the other sheet, you know, we're mid project or nearing completion, um, using these terms can help us provide a different metric on where we stand and hopefully give a little bit of comfort to some of those stakeholders looking for progress. Altogether, we think this tool is a great way for companies to up their game and build more consistency in their processes. Be sure to check it out and let me know what you think or if you have any questions. And always, you know, if you have, if you need help in determining you know, where you are today or what a reasonable target should be, we're always here to help. At Optic, our team has been performing cybersecurity assessments to help companies develop and mature their programs, identify their gaps since the CSF's inception back in 2014. You know, staying ahead in cybersecurity is a continuous journey, and the nuances and updates in the CSF 2.0 have started new conversations about how we can continuously improve and refine our approach to cybersecurity, not just in moments of crisis, but every day. We know the world is continuing to change around us, and we have to keep up with that. Whether you're leveraging Optic's Maturity and Progress Tracker or build out your own process, it's important to understand what's changing in the world around us, affecting our risk, find any cybersecurity gaps that open up uh, you know, as a result of that change, and then also manage that appropriately and build out a roadmap. I know that resources can be tight, and that's why it's so important to make sure we're spending our dollars and resources where they'll be most impactful and focused on our greatest risks. So as we wrap up, I wanted to highlight a few additional resources here on the screen, and I'll link to all of these down below in the video notes, um, as well as ones I mentioned earlier, such as the videos, the map tool, and even the new resource overview guide that NIST created, which points to a whole suite of resources that they put out along with the CSF 2.0 update. I hope you found this video helpful in figuring out where to get started on your CSF 2.0 journey. And I wanted to thank you for watching. You know, as always, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help in addressing the changes and building out your cybersecurity strategy. We'd love to hear from you at info at opticcyber.com. Thanks. Optic Cyber Solutions strives to help organizations identify and address their blind spots through our assessment, implementation, and advising services. For more information about Optic Cyber Solutions and how we can help you integrate the CSF update or conduct a CSF gap assessment, reach out at info at opticcyber.com or check out our website at opticcyber.com.